Welcome back to the Busy Keto Life channel, where you get the science-based information you need to succeed at keto. Gluconeogenesis. If you've been looking at information about keto, you've almost certainly heard of it. And what you've been told is almost certainly not true. The facts in four seconds. Gluconeogenesis is a huge buzzword for keto presenters. It makes them sound intelligent. In fact, it makes them sound more intelligent than the people viewing their videos, which is really their point in talking about gluconeogenesis at all. Make sure to watch this video to the end, because this subject is one that has a number of twists and turns, and to discover how thoroughly you've been misled, you'll want to watch to the end. What is gluconeogenesis? Put simply, it is one of the body's methods of raising its blood sugar level when it gets too low. That's it. In the keto world, gluconeogenesis is referenced almost entirely in terms of converting excess dietary protein into glucose. That begs the question, how much protein is too much protein? Everyone is fine consuming between 0.4 to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. Despite what the supplement industry has caused Americans to believe, there is zero advantage to ingesting more protein than that. Let me stress that the number is per pound of lean body mass. So, if a guy is 260 pounds, but if you could instantly remove all of his excess body weight and he'd be 180 pounds, the equation of how much is enough protein should be based on 180 pounds, not 260. How much protein do you have to eat before gluconeogenesis kicks in? If you've been listening to keto presenters on YouTube, that is a perfectly rational question for you to ask. And it shows how little 99% of keto presenters actually know about physiology. Or phrased another way, you've been programmed with bad information by presenters who have no idea what they're talking about. So what's really going on with protein consumption? Let me ask you a question. Who says your body uptakes dietary protein in excess of what it needs? In fact, it doesn't. As protein passes through the small intestines, it is broken down from peptides into amino acids. Research shows in the small intestines, those amino acids are uptaken at the rate of about 8 to 10 grams per hour. In other words, the maximum amount of protein that will be absorbed is based on how long the protein remains in the small intestines on its journey to eventually be ejected out your butt. Research shows the time the food you eat, which includes proteins, is in the small intestines is, on average, about three hours per meal. So if we go to the high end number of 10 grams uptake in each hour, your body will absorb 30 grams. It's simple second grade math. If you eat three ordinary meals a day, that means the maximum grams of protein uptake will be 90 grams, which is right in the ballpark for most people. And guess what? Your body is really smart. If it needs less protein, it will uptake less protein. So what happens if you go crazy and eat 60 grams of protein in one sitting? Simple, 30 grams, roughly, gets uptaken, and 30 grams keep moving through the intestine and ends up in the toilet. Please note that eating excess protein does not result in gluconeogenesis because the excess protein just passes through your intestines and ends up in the toilet. Now that we understand the body does not uptake excess protein, and so gluconeogenesis has nothing to do with excess protein, as 99% of keto expositors tell you, when does gluconeogenesis actually occur? Simple, when the body senses its blood sugar is getting too low, but it first signals the liver to release its glycogen stores. That almost always solves the problem. But what if it doesn't? Only then does gluconeogenesis kick in, and it has nothing to do with excess protein. Can the body uptake too little protein? Sure, but if you're on keto and keeping your calories in a proper non-deficit range and maintaining the proper keto 80-15-5 macro ratio, so 15% of your calories are coming from protein, the only reason you would be getting too little protein uptake is if your body isn't producing enough of the enzymes that break down protein. But guess what? 
High levels of dietary saturated fat is key to restoring proper digestive enzyme levels. So again, if you're eating the proper 80-15-5 keto macro ratio, your 80% fat intake will result in greater digestive enzyme production for those whose enzymes may have been low from eating the standard American diet. Here's another fact 99% of keto presenters don't tell you when giving you the BS line about excess protein causing gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis does not just target protein. It also targets stored fatty acids, otherwise known as body fat. In other words, gluconeogenesis will convert either protein or fat to glucose when needed. But keto presenters constantly beat the drum that it's all about converting protein, as if that's the only macro the body converts to glucose. And that simply isn't physiologically real. So what's the takeaway? Well, while I hate to say it, on this topic, the biggest takeaway is that most keto presenters are handing you a line of hooey so they can sound intelligent and get more subscribers. Now, I'm all about getting more subscribers so we can more effectively spread the great news of keto and help our friends and neighbors get healthy again. But I'm not willing to BS you to get there. If you value facts over BS, take a moment right now, please, to hit the subscribe button so you'll keep getting great information like this. Also, hit the notification bell because I'm going to start doing some live Q&A sessions right here on YouTube. Aside from the all-too-many keto presenters telling you things that aren't true, the big takeaways from today are, one, your body's uptake of protein is limited by the time the amino acids, protein, spends passing through your small intestines. Two, According to research, the body uptakes 8 to 10 grams of protein from the small intestines per hour. Three, on average, a meal spends about three hours moving through the small intestines. Four, that means the body uptakes only about 24 to 30 grams of protein per meal and only if it needs to. Five, if you eat more protein than your body can uptake, the excess winds up in the toilet. Six, people only need between 0.4 to 0.7 grams of protein per pound of lean body weight. Seven. The body uptakes only the amount of protein from the small intestines that it needs, and no more. Eight, there is no mechanism in the body that converts excess protein into glucose. That's keto presenter BS that has grown into a widely believed myth. Nine, gluconeogenesis is only triggered by blood sugar levels falling too low, and only if the release of liver glycogen fail to rectify this situation. 10. If you are following the proper keto macro ratio of 80-15-5, your body will never experience gluconeogenesis. 11. If you want the straight scoop, stay here on the Busy Keto Life channel. Until I see you again, keto on.